the 10. Carry on Addis breaks their hearts again. Pulley clear in the closing stages. Smart Call wins the JMB Met. And Smart Call comes home to win it in the main John's Farms Paddock Stakes. Very good evening to you and a warm welcome to this edition of Reading to Win. Well, breaking news this past week is that Vodacom Durban July winner from last year, Marin Oresco, will be joining the ranks of Mike de Kock and moving abroad to race overseas. So we wish Marin Oresco and of course his connections all the very best and certainly I know for a fact that he will hold and fly the South African flag high. Well, let's take a look on what we've got in store for you on tonight's show. We bring you a stallion profile in the shape of William Longsword and chat to John Costa. Fiona chats to Bram van Hastien about undercover agent and his love of racing. And my special guest in studio tonight is Matthew Sham to chat about new turf carriers. The impeccably bred son of former champion stallion Captain L, William Longsword, was retired to stud after a very impressive three-year-old career. We caught up with John Costa to find out how William Longsword is doing at stud. 
William Longsword is a very exciting stallion standing at Clavafle Stud and with me this morning is John Costa to tell me all about him. Firstly, John, it's fantastic that you've secured the ownership now from his previous owners. Yeah, Fee, it's been great because uh, we now feel that we can uh, syndicate him amongst all breeders in South Africa, which is fantastic. You know, his father, Captain Al, uh, was a very, very happy syndicate. Um, it was a syndicate that always uh, gave everybody a fair deal and everybody who came out of that syndicate uh, really enjoyed being part of, uh, of a stallion of his stature and we aim to do exactly the same thing with William Zongsword. That's absolutely fantastic. Now, William Longsword's pedigree speaks absolute volumes, doesn't it? Well, it does, Fee. You know, if you take uh, Captain Al as a start, um, his mother, off to war, came from a very, very average female line. In fact, and I wrote it down here, Infanta had eight runners, six winners. The best was a three-time winner. The third, Dame Balik, only had five uh, winners. The best was a four-time winner. Uh, Orientist, the fourth dam, had seven winners. The best was a four-time winner. The fifth dam had one runner was a winner, the sixth dam had no winners at all, and the seventh dam had one runner, no winners. So a very average family, uh, only two listed race winners in that family, and of course off the war came and uh, became broodmare of the year in South Africa, and it's just an absolute blue hen of a mare. So when you add Pagan Princess to this mix, the dam of William Longsword, she herself uh, by Fort Wood, 14 times uh, champion broodmare sire in South Africa, um, and she, now the dam of four runners, two grade one winners. Uh, her third horse uh, is a horse with Sean Terry called Silver God, and Sean thinks he's feature race material. Uh, she also is going to be an extraordinary mare. So to mix these two great mares together is for me extremely exciting. So apart from Captain L, we've got a fantastic female line, and he's a super looking horse himself. He's a wonderful looking horse, uh, Fee. And having the Hong Kong Jockey Club guys of Nick Colm and Mark Richards with us last week, they were explaining to us that that type of a shape of a horse is exactly what they're looking for in Hong Kong. Um, and if you think of William Longsword, uh, he has a touch more length to him. So he's the type of horse that we think will probably throw, can throw a classic type horse as well. I think uh, he's the perfect type of a horse that we need to be exporting horses one day soon. Lot 133 was a beautiful Captain L colt from Claverflay Stud. Nicholas Collum from Hong Kong bought him for 1.8 million. And Nicholas is with me once again. Nicholas, you've been quite busy at the sales. You bought two last night. It's lovely Captain L now. Very exciting. Very excited. We're excited because we wanted a Captain L. Captain L's no longer with us. Uh, he's had a fantastic career. And he's a walk-up start for us. I mean, he's a horse that produces horses with great turns of foot, uh, up to a mile. This little horse, you know, he's not big, uh, he, but he's chunky and very strong. And, and of course, the mayor has already produced two siblings who are stakes winners by Captain L. So uh, we're very, very excited. I mean, he, he was uh, a natural for us. So why we're so excited about uh, Sons of Captain L uh, at Stud is that Captain L Cross on Western Winter Mares has produced 40% stakes winners to runners, which included the mighty Carry On Alice. Captain L on Jetmaster Mares, 25% stakes winners to runners. And Captain L on Badgerland Mares, for instance, at 41.6% stakes winners to runners. And of course he had a very short racing career, but a very, very sweet one. He really did do extremely well, earning over four million. Well, he won six out of eight. And uh, the fascinating thing about William Longsword, and it's the first time it's ever happened to me as a, as a stallion master or a, uh, somebody who syndicates stallions together, is that the two jockeys that rode William Longsword have both invested in him and bought shares. Now that tells you, that speaks volumes. Now MJ and his dad uh, got together and bought a share, and MJ said to me, without a question of doubt, one of the great horses he's ever ridden. And Anton Marcus, as you know, has, has ridden many, many fabulous horses in his life. And he just said to me, yeah, after winning the race, the CTS mile, this horse gave him such a feel that he wants to be involved in it for the rest of his career. And for me, that's massive. Well, it's wonderful for Clara Flair. You've had Captain Al all your life, and, and what a wonderful story that was. And he, he could just be the, the stallion to replace him. Well, Fee, you know, everywhere around the world, Northern Dancer and, and Mr. Prospector are sort of polarizing the breed. And Roberta is, is basically dying out. And I really think that in South Africa, we have a really potent strain of Roberta. And I'm kind of hoping, I read a very interesting article by uh, David Allen in the Turf Talk, and he just mentioned there as well that once our borders open up, 
Is there a possibility that South Africa will revive the Roberta line? And I agree with him 100%. So we've got two sons of Captain Alit Stud uh, at the moment, and there are a few others around um, that will go to Stud, I'm sure, in the near future. So it is my belief, it always has been my belief, you know, when Captain Al went to stud, uh, a lot of uh, the racing folks said, you know, you've got no chance, his pedigree's too weak, et cetera, et cetera. And he, he's just blown all those theories out of the water. So I agree with you. Uh, we're going to give William Longsword a huge go. We've got uh, 33 shares sold already. We've got some fabulous support for him. He had a great book of mares in his first crop. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think he's got as good a chance as any horse uh, in South Africa. So he's obviously settled in well at Club of in a good temperament? Fantastic temperament, uh, very fertile horse, uh, easy horse to work with. He's only four years old, Fee. Uh, you want to see what he's looking like now, you know. And so by the end of this year, when we get into the uh, stallion day, where we'll be able to show him to, to all the investors, I mean, he's just a beast of horse. Um, everybody that's come around to the farm and seen him has been supremely uh, confident that he's the type of horse that, that could assert his authority as a stallion. Well, he is an absolutely gorgeous looking horse and I can't wait to see his first crop on the race course. Good luck with him and thank you for chatting to us this morning, John. Thanks, V. Glen Cotson trains at Woodhill Racing Estate, situated in the Powell Windlands, an ideal location to pre-train and train equine athletes. The 30 hectare estate is a fully equipped professional training property with large green paddocks, hot walkers, two tracks, starting stalls and Glen has access to the Melkhorst Beach where he regularly transports the horses to enjoy the cold therapeutic Cape Ocean. Throughout the last decade, Glenn has produced multiple graded winners, including Badger's Gift, the TBA Paddock Stakes, Grade 1, Big City Life, Vodacom Durban July, Lady Windermere, won the South African Philly Sprint, as well as the Garden Province Stakes. Princess Victoria won the Allen Robinson Championship and the Garden Province Stakes. Glenn currently has gold standard, a striking son of champion sire Trippy, and an outstanding three-year-old son of dynasty, eyes wide open. Glenn Cotson bases his principles on a good work ethic with the backing of a professional team, attention to detail, family values and good friends. Racehorse owner Bram van Hastien purchased his first racehorse nine years ago. Since then, his dayglow yellow and purple spotted colours have become more and more popular on the South African racetracks. Fiona Ramsden catches up with Brahm on his yacht in Cape Town. to win team are very lucky to be here at the waterfront this morning on the motor yacht Princess Emma which belongs to Bram van Hasten, very famous racehorse owner. Bram, thank you very very much for having us this morning. It's lovely to be here. Fabulous day and what a fantastic yacht you've got. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. It's an absolute uh, privilege and pleasure to be uh, here with you this morning. Now we all know you on the course as, as being a large racehorse owner but first tell us a little bit about Tacky Town and, and how you got into that business. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty much 
a business that I've started out in Mossel Bay in 1989. I was very fortunate there with that old Moss Gas project that it gave me a nice boost. And about 10 years later, my mother gave me some sound advice to stop selling darts and tennis balls and just sell shoes and call a techie town. That's what I did. And it's just grown. It's enormous now, all over Tacky Town. Yeah, we've been very fortunate and very blessed. The one store today is grown to the total of 367 odd stores, I think. And you were awarded a, um, an award for business excellence not so long ago. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a great privilege. In 2011, I was named South Africa's uh, Entrepreneur of the Year by Anderson Young, who runs the World Entrepreneur Program, amongst uh, very famous people like Stephen Sart, Chris Becker, and a few others. And apart from owning horses, we, we also know you on the course for sponsoring racing in the past. Yeah, we still do. Uh, you know, we, we had the opportunity. Um, we uh, don't mind getting involved. It is our passion, so uh, we also like to give something back. Now, you've got a lovely family. You've got two beautiful daughters and a son. Now, how did you get involved in, in racing? I believe it was through one of your daughters. Yeah, my beloved daughter, Bianca. She, uh, since she was eight years old, she had a love for horses. She bought her own little pony by money that she saved up. She became quite a good rider and uh, I became her groom. So we went around to all the events, uh, doing showing, show hunter, jumping, etc. And I think because of that love for horses, I one day was in the car of Andy Williams and I overheard him buying a racehorse. And I thought uh, I should take a chance and get in for off. And that's what I did. And lo and behold, you know, when your first one is a good one, then uh, you get bitten by this uh, bug. <laughs> you certainly got the bug. And you've got lots of nice partners as well. And that's a nice part of racing is to have nice partners. You know, I've had uh, this with Greg Bortz, you know, a lovely guy, what a gentleman. And uh, we've been fortunate recently uh, to win the one million, half, or half a million dollar race with undercover agent. I've got my good friend Billy Henderson in Australia, who's my partner in the Eagle Eagle. I've got Hedley McGraw down in Port Elizabeth, who's also a fantastic partner of mine. And a few others, you know, also Bryn Russell. Uh, and, and quite a few other guys around the country sort of thing that are just having fun to race with them. And of course it's an expensive business but when you win a race like uh, the CTS Smile on Met Day for half a million it's really really worth it when Undercover Agent won so well. Yeah, I think it's it always nice if you win some big prize money. It, it basically softens the blow, but, but the racing is an expensive hobby. We realize that from the outset, but I think there's much more to that. You know, the friends you make, it's the environment that you move around in, and, and you meet people from all walks of life. But that CT incentive for purchasing horses that can run in these big races is, is fabulous, isn't it? And I mean, you didn't buy Undercover Agent for too much, and, and he's gone and earned over and above that. Yeah, we paid 325,000 Rand for Undercover Agent, and they, I mean, the, you know, the prize money was $500,000. I think the first prize purse was $250,000. So it's a nice incentive, you know, when you buy your hope, like when we buy all the other horses, you always buy in, in hope. And yes, it helps to soften the blow. I think we'll always be out of pocket in racing, but like my father always told me, my son, two things in life that's very nice, but very expensive, slow horses and fast women. But you've grown to such an extent, you've now got Kerry Jack as your racing manager and that's going well. Yeah, she's also fantastic and she makes my life just more enjoyable. She is uh, like very astute in what she's been doing. She's been in this uh, racing business for a long time. She look at my balls, she keep the vets at bay, which we also need and we appreciate the work they do. But it just make my whole racing experience so much more enjoyable. And of course you just recently purchased Legal Eagle Horse of the Year. He's done you really proud. You won the Queen's Plate and you were a very creditable fourth in the Met. Yeah, sadly through unfortunate circumstances, you know, Legal Eagle came on the market and I've also put my name in the ad. We also made a bid. I know there were some other fierce bidders and I was very happy when Derek Brugman phoned me up one evening and he told me that my bid was the best one and uh, we came up with the money. I found uh, my two good mates, uh, Billy Anderson in Australia and Edley McGraw, and they were very quick to respond and very happy to become my partners. And of course you said you always wanted to win the Queen's Plate. That was a very special day. Yes, I think uh, maybe you know we all want to win a, a Group 1. I've got a very good friend and racing partner of mine, Lawrence Winners in Johannesburg, who's had fantastic horses, but that Group 1 has just always been evading us. So I've got one up on him now, but I know his day, his day will come.
And sport, it's in the blood, isn't it? Your, your son's a keen sportsman. You've always been keen on sport. We've, we've, I've, I've been very privileged to have a son which is really a fantastic cricket and rugby player and he's also the head boy of the school. So very proud of him. And I've always called him my group one horse, Little Brumby. That's fantastic. And going forward, you've got a, a good string of horses. Should be lots of opportunities ahead. Yeah, we uh, we buy every year. I think there's quite a few, probably about 40, 50 unraised ones. I know there's one coming out today, River Rafting, that me and Greg bought. And the lucky Lakers has got a very high think of, and we hope it will run well. But yes, a lot of unraised ones, very excited. And you know, sometimes you get surprises, be it good or bad. And you know, it's, it's great to have you spending quite a bit of time in Cape Town. The racing's been fantastic over the last month or so with the Queen's Plate, with the Met. It's been a great time, hasn't it? Yeah, it has been a fantastic time. Also, I have to spend a lot of time here because of my work now as uh, 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 doing leasing for the Star Group, uh, for our business, being Tacky Town, Sea City and the others. Uh, that also keeps me very busy and all the business basically in Cape Town. So that needs my time in Cape Town. Sadly, I cannot be in George the amount of time that I would like to be, but that's just how it is. Well, it's certainly a growing business and a, and a growing um, you're growing and growing as a racehorse owner, and we wish you all the best in the future. And thank you very much for having us today and chatting to us. Thank you, Fee. It was my pleasure, and all the best of you in your program. Thank you. Well, Matthew Sham is one of three brothers who took over the reins from their family business of Mark and Dori Sham and New Turf Carriers. And since they've taken over, the business has grown substantially over the years. Well, to tell us all about it is Matthew. And lovely to have Matthew Sham in the studio with us for the Breeding to Win show. Matt, welcome. Thanks, Jules. Thanks for having me. Now, just tell us a little bit about it because you firstly work with your brothers. And that's, of course, Michael and Marcus. And uh, three brothers taking it over from... Your parents couldn't have been easy initially. I suppose yeah. some uh, testing times. Look, Jules, yeah, it is uh, very testing, but um, my younger brother, Marcus, sits in another office. He runs our shavings business. Thank the Lord for that. Um, and me and Mark, yeah, we clash heads, but we always seem to come out of it. Um, you know, the dilemmas behind family business. Look, my mom and dad did it, and if they got through it, yeah. we'll get through it. Well, yeah, like you said, there's always challenges working for family, but I suppose... It's the closeness that you've got that kind of gets you through the day-to-day -day well, that's, dealings. That's it, Jules. You know, I can happily get on a flight and turn my phone off and know that if mm. there's an issue, either of my brothers can deal with anything and vice versa. Um, and it's good to know that you can trust people in your own business, you know. 100%. Yeah. You're kind of all on the same, same level. Exactly. The business was established back in 1995. Yeah. Um, now we're looking back to 20, or we're looking forward to 2018. Tell us how it's changed in between that for you guys. Jules, we've, we've tried to sort of run the business the same way as my folks ran it. We haven't really changed much. Obviously, technology's better with the trucks and tracking systems and cell mm. phones. I, mean, I don't know how they got through it with no cell phones back then, but I suppose you had people, when you had a breakdown, that would stop and help you, you know? And if the truck didn't get to point B when it had to, the person at that farm would phone my mom or phone my dad and they would go looking for the truck if it wasn't there sure. but times are a lot easier now with technology and with saying that it's also a lot harder because your phone rings at midnight mm. with the uh, stupid phone calls which you shouldn't be taking at that time of the night. Well look I'm um, looking at your team around you you've got top class staff yeah, and, we, and, and drivers and we, I suppose that's what you've surrounded yourself with. No, we're blessed. We like, we've got a fantastic team. I've got uh, very good managers working for us now as well because we obviously can't be everywhere at the same time. I've got drivers that have been with us from day one. Um, Joel's been with us, oof, I think, 16 or 17 years now. Philip Fourri, our manager in Durban, has been on and off for 18 years. Um, he's a soldier. Um, can trust him with our, with our lives. Um, got a great team. Just tell us how it all started for your mom and dad. And then what made you guys step in and take it over, Matt? Jules, my, my, my dad got involved with a chap called Ken Hall. I'm sure most people would remember him. He was Mr. Transport South Africa, Horse Transport South Africa. 
and um, their company went bang. I don't know the reasons for it. And my dad was involved. And if my memory serves me correct, I was only nine years old in '95. But my dad got uh, one trailer out of out of the deal. Yeah. And um, the one truck came on public auction. And I don't know how my dad wangled the money or who he borrowed it from or who he, what banks lent it to him. But he bought our truck number one, which we're still running today in our in our shavings business. Um, we won't get rid of her. She's an old faithful. Um, and him and uh, uh, the late Dennis Mills started, started the company together. And then you guys took it over, and now you're sitting with how many trucks? Sure, Jules, we're sitting with 17 yeah. trucks um, between the long distance and the two racing contracts and two berths and five berths. And, yeah. 2014 wasn't such a fantastic year for new turf carriers. It's possibly any carrier's nightmare when an accident happens on the road yeah. and you lose drivers and you lose thoroughbreds. Yeah. Tell us about that. Look, Jules, yeah, uh, we didn't lose a driver, but we lost mm. uh, a groom, um, lost a couple of horses for Justin Snaith. It wasn't a great time, but we were dealing with good people. I mean, it was one in the morning, two in the morning, phone Chris Snaith, answered his phone, mm. was a gentleman, said to me, deal with it, keep him informed, and that's what we did, and we're still doing work for Snaith today. You know, you look back and obviously you, you handled it in a very professional manner and you were, I suppose, lucky but also professional getting out of it. And it just shows you how strong your team was because we've seen in the past with accidents that have happened to uh, carriers that have pretty much stuck them out of business. Yeah, we are so fortunate that we've got such loyal clients. And I mean, not only the big clients, the small clients too, they've stuck mm. with us. Um, again, I want to reiterate how gentle, what a gentleman Chris Nath was and... and Justin and Jonna, they dealt with it with us mm. like soldiers. Um, we had to let the clients know which horses had died, which isn't. The hardest, yeah. yeah that's the, that's, hardest, that's the hardest part. But yeah, thank God we've come through it and things are looking good. And um, yeah, it's stressful. When you put trucks on the road, these things happen. Unfortunately, we've got to do our best. Uh, to, to avoid them happening. 100%, yeah. and uh, you guys do a very good job. I mean, when you consider how, much, how many horses you transport all over the country, um, you know, it, it's top class performance, having yeah. dealt with you in the past. So I know, I'm talking yeah. from a bit of experience. Thank you. Matt, let's just quickly chat about what's happened over the last couple of years with new turf carriers and your new investors. Uh, Jules, Larry and Bernard bought in, Larry Nestad and Bernard Cantor bought into our business. Um, a lot of people thought that they bought into Bailas, which it's very incorrect. Um, I met Bernard at a, at a dinner at Claverflay at their farm sale and over a few whiskies uh, the deal was broken. And yeah, looking back it was probably one of the best things we've done. They're absolute gentlemen to deal with, both of them, Larry and Bernard. If I need advice I can find them any time of the day or night. They answer their, their phones. They're thorough, thorough gentlemen and, and very, very easy to deal with. Obviously that has boosted the business but over and above that You've also, or you put in a tender for the transport of horses to race courses. Yes. Um, obviously being Cape Town and Gold Circle yes. City. So tell us about that. Yeah, Jules. Um, so we tended for Gold Circle KZN. Uh, we took over there in April 2016. So it's almost two years we've been running now. Cape Town we tended for mid last year. We took over in December. Mm -hmm. um, so it's fairly new. Um, Things are going good. It's pressure work, but we've got two good managers in both centres. Durban, we've got Philip Ferry running it for us, and Cape Town, um, Lawrence Whitmore, who's also been in the horse transport game his whole life. Um, and things are going good, yeah. Have you kept it as one big company, New Turf Carriers? No. Uh, Jules, we've, uh, we run the contracts through a company called Saskia Trading. Um, it was just purely a business move just to separate our contract work from new mm. turf carriers are long distance work because contracts aren't there forever as we know we've had one we've lost one before mm. um so yeah it's just purely a business move okay so what does the future hold now for new turf carriers oh look jules we're striving to grow but so you don't want to grow too much because then you you lose the personal touch mm. you know you you start losing touch with your clients and our industry is a personal industry you know you become you live your industry you become friends with your clients you which, which also sometimes uh, deems to be a problem uh, late nights after sales and up early in the morning. But um, we, we're happy where we are, um, you know, want to grab one or two more good clients, but um, we're very happy where we are at the moment. And a lot of your passion is with horse racing. Yeah, that's right, Jules. Um, we love what we do. We love the people we deal with. 
you know, as as hard as we like to say the trainers are difficult, they're actually not when you start dealing with other aspects of horses, you know, it, um, I'll use Mark DeCock or Sean Terry or anyone for that matter. You load their big runners at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. All they want to know is when they get halfway mm. and then phone them an hour before they get to their destination. Whereas other people in the equestrian world want to know every 10 minutes what's going on with their horse, which starts mm. becoming frustrating. Matt, we wish you, Michael and Marcus, all the very best. I know Marcus is a bit of the sideline with the shavings, but he's still part of New Turf Carriers, I know that. And of course, Mark and Dari, the foundation of New Turf Carriers, all the very best in horse racing and for the future. Thanks, Jules. Thank you very much for joining us on the Breeding to Win team. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Whiskey Baron and Legal Eagle. It's Whiskey Baron who's claimed the advantage. No more from Legal Eagle. And Whiskey Baron goes on to win. Edict of Nantes is in front, the yellow cap. He's going on strongly. Nothing got a chance for him now. Edict of Nantes drawing away in the closing stages. Goes away to win it comfortably. Edict of Nantes is going great guns from El Sahem. Horizons back third. Edict of Nantes from El Sahem. Edict of Nantes takes it to another level. Lady of the house. Lady of the house. Give me six on the inside. Lady of the house pulls it out. Captain America from trip to heaven. And Captain America going great guns, Captain America to shine. But the leader sails south, and it sails south going on. Sail south will win it. Captain America second. Soft falling rain, put it clear. Soft falling rain, won the SA Nursery by three. Well, that brings us to the end of our show for this week. Don't forget to join us for our next edition of Breeding to Win. Until then, from the Breeding to Win team, good night and good racing.
minutes in, carry on Alice breaks their hearts again. Will he clear in the closing stages? Smart Call wins the Jamie Mid. And Smart Call comes home to win it in the main chance farms product stakes.